So some big news this morning from uh, two of our community's most storied and oldest performing arts institutions, that would be the Toledo Symphony and Toledo Ballet. They announced this morning that they are merging. They're coming under the umbrella of the Toledo Alliance for the Performing Arts, TAPA for short. And I'm joined in the studio now to talk all about this and uh, explore what's going on here. We have uh, Zach Vassar, President and CEO of the Toledo Symphony. We also have Lisa Mayer Lang, who is Artistic Director of Toledo Ballet. And we also have uh, the Toledo Symphony's new music director who's getting ready to jump on stage and lead the symphony <laughs> this weekend, in fact. That is Alain Trudeau. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming on board and, and helping us uh, navigate our way through this big announcement because this is this is pretty big news that uh, that is going on. Zach, you want to reiterate again exactly what is happening here and how it came to be? Well, Brad, this has been about a year in the making. Uh, so, you know, the symphony and the ballet have a 70-year-old relationship. I think we first started working together on the Nutcracker in 1949, mm-hmm. and uh, this is a collaboration that has endured. We've uh, performed with the ballet and some wonderful collaborations. The ballet dancers have been on our peristyle stage many, many times. And uh, the more we work together and the more we synergize the the more it made sense to look for closer collaboration models. So we spent uh, the last year investigating that, and uh, I think we've come up with a, with a wonderful path forward where we are, are merging our organizations, where we're allying together to, to support the art forms and to support the performing arts in Toledo. Now, who went to who with this idea, and how did you, how did you approach it? I mean, did it come from the symphony? Did it come from the ballet? Do you... Uh Remember if it was a... I, I like how you're, you're, you're trying to make this sound like who, who asked who out on the first exactly, date. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> So, uh, so who it, went it to was, the to It, the it prom? was more like we were, you know, across from each other and we just, you know, caught each other's eye. <laughs> I, there you go. I, I, <laughs> and you heard, you know, in the background, you heard, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I think, Lisa, you might have perspective on this. When we did um, <clears throat> the 2017 Nutcracker, mm-hmm. uh, the symphony got a lot more involved in, in helping the ballet with some marketing. Yes. And I think we even sold the tickets through our box office. Yeah. And, you know, it, when organizations come together, like that, there's a certain amount of trust and um, uh, uh, shared mission that you you want this to be a really successful right. production. And yeah. and I felt like th- when when we did that together, and it was it was very successful. I think uh, the ballet made a lot more money <laughs> than we they did. did the year before. We did, yes, um, and the, 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 uh, last year. the light bulbs went off. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the and you know, and then just getting to know each other in the process, getting to know um, Zach and and the marketing team there, mm-hmm. they did amazing things for us, and we just you know, it, it really became a relationship of. Like he said, mutual trust, yeah. and it it was a su- success. So you know, when you have a successful production like that and a successful year, and wow, you, you, you want just to capitalize want to on move it. forward yeah. with that. Well, uh, Elaine, you have talked so many times about collaborating with the community and coming, you know, to our community as a, a new presence, a new force, and a very important force on the performing arts scene here. Um, it's great that that you're beginning you're you're stepping off with this collaboration. I'm wondering when did you sort of come on board with all this? Were you involved from the very beginning with these discussions or you have heard about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> <The> surprise. <laughs> yeah, surprise. No, actually it's uh it's exactly in the same in the same concept of what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So it's uh the the more we can create alliances the more we can we're the more the stronger we are in the community in the arts yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so this and and it's interesting because programming my my debut concert my first concert it's funny we call it my debut but yeah. <laughs> it's uh it's my debut actually as as music the full-time music directors i've been here in the past now it's it's the our first as a as a married couple let's say <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know i i wanted to have a second half of the concert that was dedicated to uh, the music and our partners and in the community and just bringing everybody together. So, of course, with the music, uh, we have some music by uh, Chris Dietz, which is, uh, you know, composers from Ohio, from around here. Yeah. And uh, um, and the, the ballet was uh, involved in this. And that was even before I heard about this uh, this project of merger. 
Yeah. So that's actually when, when when we say that it comes from the art form, it comes from the will to collaborate. It's not a marketing thing. It's not something that comes from the business side necessarily, but it really came from the artists wanting to to perform together, wanting to bring something special to the audience. Because of course we're going to do Swan Lake. That's yeah. that's like a no brainer when you do ballet. But there's many other projects we can do that people don't necessarily associate with ballet, but that the ballet might illustrate even better. Better the music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking about mm-hmm. um, uh, like the um, the Goldberg variation, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's so not an orchestra piece, but that's something that somebody would not think about. Oh, and also uh, the back the cello suites with your mind with dancers, right? So there's a lot of orchestra music that some music that I wouldn't program so much if we didn't have the collaboration. Like uh, for example, uh, I don't know Stravinsky Song of Nightingale. You know, if right. you have somebody singing that and you have great dancers there, everything that's Stravinsky basically. You know, you it's yeah. Mu- it makes much more sense with dancers. Yeah. So do you think, and you mentioned that 2017 Nutcracker um, making more money, obviously doing better at the box office, and by extension maybe bringing in some new folks because of your collaboration with Symphony. I mean, is it your hope that your audiences will sort of cross-populate then and grow as, as a result? And and that we grow the audience. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot that you can do when we aren't just a bunch of penguins sitting on the stage <laughs> playing uh, orchestral music, which we love to do, and I think we do it really no, well. No offense to penguins. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite animal. Um, but that when was you, cold. When you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but when you add this... A lot of penguins up in Canada. So yeah. <laughs> um, when, when you create this sort of... Uh, audiovisual component and it becomes a multi-sensory experience where it's the sound and the and the sight it's something that we've tried really hard to do with some of the the audiovisual stuff we've, we've been doing at the peristyle mm-hmm. um there there are more engagement points uh, but this isn't a new idea if we look back at our histories we've done a lot going into our 75th anniversary um marie Vogt would a partner with the music director, one of Alain's predecessors, uh, Wolfgang Streismann, in the 50s, and they would choose a piece of classical music, and she would choreograph it, and the mm-hmm. ballet would dance to it. And mm-hmm. you know, so there's there's great original choreography to music that was at that time very new by Copland, for example. And we've we've had some ballet dancers bring the soul of tango to mm-hmm. uh, some performances in recent years. We've um, We've created uh, kind of a, 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 now a tradition of our Halloween concert having some ghoulish zombies <laughs> bringing Zombie music dancers. together. Yeah, yes. and and but it, not not thriller, right? <laughs> not thriller, uh, yeah. Michael Jackson. No. <laughs> Although yet. that might be fun. not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> write that one down. Yeah. Okay, I get credit uh, for it. But um, you know, it, the, the 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 point we kept coming up to is why not? I mean, we have this great relationship. We have this history of collaboration. And and I think the organizations do really care for each other and want them to succeed. Yeah. So, Absolutely. you know, this is just, a, a, as you say, a win-win or a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lisa, how do you see uh, this this merger with the symphony enhancing the the mission of the ballet? Well, you know, one of the things that I'm most excited about is is we obviously have had the symphony with us since 1949, mm-hmm. performing live, you know, for our Nutcracker. And we um, we had a show a few years back called Heart to Quill, in which we mm-hmm. had a quartet, um, I believe. It was, uh, I'm not sure of the year, I want to say 2014. Yeah. Um, and... It was just magical to have, a, you know, it's always magical to have the live musicians on stage with dancers. There's nothing like it. So I feel, you know, the more we do that, the better for the dancers, the better for the music- musicians and the audience. I mean, you know, the symphony members or the patrons that go to see, to listen to the music now have that visual aspect of the dancers on stage. And, I, you know, I just think it it makes our mission even stronger. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Mayer-Lang, Artistic Director of the uh, Toledo Ballet. I'm also joined today with Zach Vasser, who is uh, the CEO of Toledo Symphony, and Elaine Trudell, who is the Music Director of Toledo Symphony. If you're just joining us or just recently joined us, uh, we're talking about the news this morning that was just announced that Toledo Symphony and Toledo Ballet are coming together in an alliance. You're calling it the Toledo Alliance for the performing arts. Now, there's precedent for this. I know down in Dayton, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, did you consult with them at all about their experience? We did. We did. So uh, th- th- there's actually a, a very short history here. Uh, in 1985, the Chattanooga Symphony and the Chattanooga Ballet, I'm sorry, Chattanooga Opera uh, came together. And that was really the first partnership like this. Um, there were other consolidations with opera houses in Cleveland, um, some of these more successful than others. Um when uh, in 2002, the Utah Symphony and the Utah Opera came together as a merger, mm-hmm. those two organizations still um, have separate personalities and branding, but they, their back office is, is consolidated. And uh, then in about six or seven years ago, the Dayton Arts Alliance was, was formed, and that was a triumvirate. That was a symphony, an opera, and a ballet. Uh, so we spoke a lot with them as kind of the most recent success story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and given their proximity. Uh, so th- they've been kind of a, a spiritual guide through this. And, um, and they've had a very successful uh, collaboration. Right? Very much so. Yeah. And, you know, I, I spoke with Paul, who's their, their president, and, and he intimated that, you know, perhaps one of the more pleasurable uh, discoveries was all of the things that you can do with music and dance, um, ballets that exist, choreography that exists, and then a new dance that hasn't yet been formed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you think about, you know, symphony has a lot of people in the community. Uh, you know, we have 60 full-time musicians. Those are, you know, 60 households and, and, uh, and 60 families that, that come together in Toledo. And, uh, when you think of a ballet, you have a lot of dancers. They're, they're Toledoans. They're, they're from the area, uh, and they're surrounding suburbs so this is a this is a, a appropriate alliance for the performing arts in Toledo yeah how will this impact the organizations you know the structure of the organizations how are you restructuring so you, you know the this this tapa as we call it uh, Toledo Alliance for the performing arts uh, will be our our headquarters so mm-hmm. uh, that will be the umbrella that uh, will be the name on our paychecks but the um, the names of the symphony and the ballet as brands and identities will continue. So we'll still have ToledoSymphony.com. The ballet will still have its website. These will still be things that our wonderful and generous donors can support individually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the consolidation will really be behind the scenes. And, you know, any sort of merger that we hear about, you know, in the, the for-profit world, you know, listen to Marketplace. They are always talking about these sorts of things. You look for synergies. And, you know, I think the uh, the way that I kind of gauge whether a merger feels like good news or bad news is, do they need to do this? Was this a merger mm-hmm. that had to happen? Was it the last straw? Mm-hmm. Or was this something that they wanted to make? Was it something that, that it felt like the right time? Why not do right. it? So you want to you merge when you're strong and not because you have to. Mm-hmm. And you know, this is a, a merger that is, is very filled with camaraderie and uh, mutual respect. Yeah. And uh, you know, if, if we do this right, the day-to-day transactions that people have with our organizations shouldn't change. But if we also do it right, we can we can synergize in the back office. The ballet has some uh, some vacancies that will be assumed by former symphony staff. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're going to be the, the the head honcho. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll continue as president and CEO of the combined organization. Right. And uh, but. Uh, we will we will continue to see uh, the the synergies come through. So, you know, the the spirit is really that the um, the efficiency is behind the scenes, so that we can we can optimize the the behind the scenes work, so that we can maximize the art form that the audiences interact with. So you're going to have one box office right. for both. Yeah, and, I mean, it, it, box office is a great example. You you talk about these sorts of synergies. Why do we all need individual box offices? Why do we all need independent fundraising staff? You know, the the, the organizations aren't Fortune 500 companies. We don't need, you know, indi- you know uh, to have all of these people running around and doing the same thing. So, you know, you just think simply, you know, business 101, this makes a lot of sense just from an efficiency standpoint. Yeah. What kind of input did your trustees or your board have with this? Did you work with them in, in creating this model? Yeah, we had a t- kind of two ad hoc committees made up of trustees and staff, uh, and we we came together. We we sought funding from the Toledo Community Foundation, 
and uh, they have a, an entire granting process that helps nonprofits look for uh, collaborative opportunities uh, called the Strategic Alliance Partnership. Yeah. So we were funded through that. We uh, put out a competitive bid for uh, kind of a facilitator of these discussions, and we ended up working with a company from California, a consulting firm called La Piana, and uh, they work with nonprofit organizations and try to help them merge like this. So this and, is really a, a group effort that goes above and beyond just the two performing arts organizations. You had mm-hmm. assistance from Toledo Community Foundation, all of that really speaks really highly of the community at large where right. we live and the support that is out there for the symphony and for the ballet. Absolutely. You yeah. know, we're very lucky that you know something like the Toledo Community Foundation encourages us to think this way. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of times in, in nonprofits, um, I always say that nonprofits and, and, and especially those in the arts are creative, uh, but we aren't known for being innovative. And it's when somebody at a foundation or a grantor will challenge us to think differently. Sometimes when we achieve our greatest moments, and uh, you know, we were very happy to see that there was funding available with the Toledo Community Foundation, and and they've done this before. I mean, there there have been other um, mergers within the Toledo area of nonprofits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Read for Literacy merged with Claire's Day a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, so you know, these things are possible through TCF and and the generosity of them to have us thinking this way. Yeah. Now, you say you're you're merging your fundraising, but if somebody says, I, I want to support the symphony mm-hmm. or I want to support the ballet, I mean, they, they still have control over where their money goes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, they're yeah. able to donate, you know, to whomever they designate the right. funds to. But or, you hope that they'll donate to both. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elaine, I know that you have uh, such a strong interest in education. Can we talk a little bit how this is going to impact or enhance the educational efforts? I mean, there's Toledo Ballet School. There's Toledo Symphony School. There's a lot of stuff going on for the youth in our community. How is this going to grow those those efforts? Uh, well, as you might know, uh, we have three youth orchestras together mm-hmm. on the same program. And that brings together, and also our our players uh, te- teach in the building where we are for the moment, mm-hmm. and they teach private lessons, and that that brings together about what three or four hundred mm-hmm. uh, young people, four hundred young students in music. That's one of the things I I thought was remarkable when I came here, because <clears throat> on my uh, my concept, I had always had those three pillars about, you know, the excellence, of course, of the mm-hmm. symphony. I mean, that goes without saying. Nobody shows up on stage without, you know, wanting to be the best that they've ever been, you know, every day. <laughs> no, it's normal. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah. you know, it's a mix of uh, loving the music and self-respect. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should all have that, yeah. that going no, for us. No, but that starts very young. That yeah. starts even mm-hmm. in school. That starts in youth orchestra. Right. Yeah. You know, you tell the people in the first rehearsal of youth orchestra, uh, look on your right, look on your left. These might be your colleagues. You know, yeah. you might know these people for a very, very long mm-hmm. time, you know. Right. And I'm sure it's the same thing with dance, you know. Oh, so, absolutely. Yes. So, <laughs> and you will be working for one of them one day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Usually. Right. Right. So, so, so be nice. <laughs> so if, if we put all of this together, the resources, plus the, the, the dance school, which is magnificent. I mean, it's a, it's a great, great, great. Well, you'll talk about how, it. How many fantastic. students do you have, Lisa, in that dance school? We stay at an average around 270, Wow! sometimes yeah. up to 320. So between the yeah. two organizations, you know, we have a lot of students in the community. That's a lot of people. And what I'm excited about is that, you know, at some point we would like to be in the same building and, you know, they can feed off of each other. And yeah. I'm exactly. always telling the dancers yeah. they need to pick up an instrument. Yeah. And we're always Go telling the, the musicians too. that they need to start dancing. <laughs> 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 now no, you will. <laughs> no, 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 but seriously, it opens the mind of the of every, every different discipline and, uh, and the arts. Because uh, as musicians, when you're trained, you're trained very young, very uh, usually, and you start, let's say, playing piano or violin, and you're a little, you know, at home, you practice, you practice, you practice, then you go to a, a school in a studio, you practice, you practice, then you go to conservatory, you practice, you know, and often you go in front of the public and 
you just present something that you've practiced. There's no not much humanity. It takes a long time before the and humanity is introduced in this because you just don't have the experience and yeah. all you've known is is not to collaborate all that much. That's why we encourage chamber music. That's why we encourage like in performing even at an early age. I mean you play a piece you can handle, but you know, just get out there. Like we have a quartet from the, the youth orchestra that, that that was playing around town last summer. And and that was it's amazing for them because they see the audience reaction, you know, and they feed off that and then they understand what performing is. Mm. Performing is not practicing something and going to play it no perfect. Uh, performing is sharing and it's <laughs> creating a moment between the audience and, and mm. what you're doing. But with dancers now, then, then we can collaborate and there can be an interaction not just between a performer and a public, but between performers of different art forms. Yeah. You know, and music, and then, and then there's a little exchange. There's, a, I don't want to make a pun, but uh, there's a dance <laughs> between the, <laughs> that happens, and and, no, and then you feed <laughs> off each other, and and you become better artists, not yeah. just musicians, not just dancers, but artists. Well, it, it it it's really interesting to think about because the the collaboration that you are looking forward to between the ballet and the symphony, and that you've already done it with with certain uh, programs. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And then you look at it in terms of the schools that you have going mm-hmm. on, and, and you sort of have like a miniature version of those mm-hmm. possibilities That's opening true. up for mm-hmm. the kids. We hear so much about um, how the school system has dropped the ball when it comes mm-hmm. to music education. And I imagine it's even worse as far as like, you know, classical <laughs> ballet. Oh, you don't have a lot of that in, no. the, in the schools. But, but these are disciplines that teach very important, you know, human social qualities and i think it's great that uh, both of your organizations are really picking up that ball and running with it and providing these opportunities so it's exciting to think that that those opportunities are are going to grow and that they're going to have more kind of you know, cross pollination you know for lack mm-hmm. of a of a better word um, was the educational um the educational element a, a really driving force for you as well when you were putting this together absolutely you know, mm-hmm. this is something where, you know, we look at the organizations and, and the types of repertoire we perform. That makes sense. But the fact that both of our missions have education and that both of these organizations have their own schools, mm-hmm. you know, you put these together and you suddenly have 700 students. And that's that's what we've achieved individually. And you think about how much, you know, this should be uh, something that's greater than the sum of its parts very soon. When you have, you just think of a family, you drop off one kid for a dance lesson and maybe one of your other kids wants to take a piano lesson or vice versa. And maybe you have students who want to study both. And then you start to think about the relationships that can foster there. And I, I, I was talking the other day with Elaine. We, we had this idea that we have um, we have people who might discover greater depths of music because of this association with dance. And you think about this, it's like a college entrance exam waiting to be written, (laughs) where you say, I I used to play Bach, and then I learned how Bach can move. And now I have a totally different ambition in my life to go out and become a choreographer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, you're kind of getting on the the line of questioning that I wanted to go to next because we we spoke with Lisa briefly about how the ballet will be enhanced through the collaboration. How will the symphony uh, be enhanced? And and where do you you see this going? Where do you want it to go? Right. Well, okay, so I think one one question I didn't anticipate came up this morning was – Will we have dance on every program? Mm. And, I, and, and the answer to that is no. I think uh, it'd be far too wearing on the toes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, so, uh, as, as true as ballet will not have symphony on every dance right. Right. Every, yeah. every project. Right. Right. Yeah, but the uh, audience is free to dance if they. they of wish. course, Please. always, yeah. always. That's what the aisles are for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know what this does become is a really sincere commitment to exploring these sorts of synergies and, and programmatic opportunities mm-hmm. and whereas before we had to make sure that our calendars synced up and that we were available to think of these things mm-hmm. and that the symphony could be in the pit if the ballet was going to do a special production that funding was always a challenge mm-hmm. um a lot of that stuff just goes away so we 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 set ourselves up to synchronize and we sell we set mm-hmm. ourselves up to really support one another 
and uh, and really be good siblings and you know not kind of across town neighbors but you know living under the same roof Mm -hmm. right well this weekend folks can get sort of a a a little taste a little sneak preview and and also witness you know an historic event here in our (laughs) our performing arts community Alain Trudel making his uh, official debut as music director of Toledo Symphony again on the program, you've got. Uh, tell me again, what's on the program? We started I know this we had, little thing called the Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Oh yeah, Symphony. that's right. I've heard <laughs> of it. <laughs> no, we um, open with that. That's our yeah. that's our overture. <laughs> Beethoven, Schmeethoven. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've heard that Symphony Number no. Five before. Uh, so that'll be familiar to folks. Yes, and, and then. You have the new piece by Christopher Dietz from yes. down at BGSU. Again, that speaks to your interest in, in new music and Absolutely. music from the community. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right? And then we have Swan Lake, mm-hmm. and, and they're going to be – there's going to be dancing. Yes, right? yes. our first collaboration together yep. with him as conductor, so I'm yeah. really excited we'll about that. We'll talk about that a little bit. Tell us tell us what, what we can expect. Well, I mean, it, our, the orchestra is going to be, I assume, on the stage. Are the dancers course. going to be on the stage? <laughs> Good question. Are you, you're not going to – <laughs> Good question. Elaine, you're, you're not showing up in a tutu, I take it. No, 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 no. I would like to start my tenure and continue my tenure after that. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to wear a 1-1. One, one. Oh, yeah. one, one. Yeah. No, 2-4. <laughs> no, no, but you know, there, there are two things that are very interesting that uh, you touched upon, what Zach touched upon a little bit, is that uh, when we program now, like uh, we we have the ballet in mind, right? Yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm programming, now we're programming 19 and, and 1920, 2021, the, those seasons. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this this new work that uh, we're, we're going to commission, I'd be great with the dancers or mm-hmm. so now it's it's part of the dna you know when when i'm programming so it's really exciting but yeah. to come back to your questions yes we will all be on stage <laughs> but actually yesterday we were on stage measuring you know <laughs> uh, <I'm, laughs> how much the, space you yeah, have. yeah the, the square fo- we footage because uh, yeah. uh, we do have to bring the orchestra back uh quite a bit though when we have you know a bigger presentation i mean sometimes we just have a few dancers now it's bigger because we want to do something really but you're special. gonna have a bigger stage crew now with the ballet helping out so well you know we have uh, <laughs> Uh, a, a certain magician named, named Tim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tim Lake. Uh, yeah, right. T- Tim is, uh, and I saw him yesterday. I sent him a drawing, and I sent him a drawing with, you know, lots of uh, little love uh, emoji next to him. <laughs> you know, thank you so much. And I see him, he said, okay, thanks a lot. That's great. We'll make it done. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm like, whoa, you know. <laughs> so, no, everybody is in a can-do mode. Yeah. You know, that's very important because there's always a reason why something cannot happen. You can find one if you want, you know. Yeah. But if you decide that that you really want to do something because there's a desire, there's an artistic desire, and that people uh, come together as equal, mm-hmm. then actually you can do things. Great. Well, uh, just to reiterate, it was announced this morning that Toledo Symphony and Toledo Ballet are coming together to create a new Toledo Alliance for the Performing Arts. Uh, I want to thank all three of you for coming in today. Alain Trudel, uh, by the way, if you are interested in seeing Alain's debut this weekend, 8 o'clock, uh, Friday and Saturday at the Paris Style, 419-246-8000. That's mm-hmm. the box office number, also ToledoSymphony.com. Lisa Mayer lang who is Artistic Director of Toledo Ballet, and also Zach Vasser, who is President and CEO of Toledo Symphony. Now, You also have a a website for this uh, new organization. Can you tell us what that is? Certainly. So TAP is going to have a website, which is simply artstoledo.com, A-R-T-S-T-O-L-E-D-O.com. And here people can read more about the merger, understand some frequently asked questions, and uh, certainly understand the spirit of what we're trying to achieve. Great. Well, congratulations to all of you. I look forward to what this new merger will bring. And uh, thanks for joining us and talking about it here on FM91. Thank you, Brad. Thank Thank you. you.